Hi everybody, it's Kate Richberg, and if it's Friday, it must be Free Tip Friday here at BeadShop.com. I'm adjusting my camera just a little bit. You caught me adjusting, so let me continue to adjust right here real quick. And let me grab my phone and make sure that I can see all of you right here, all of your comments here. Let me just pull that up. And I hope everybody's doing well on this Friday, this free tip Friday. And I see everybody jumping on right here. That's great. Oops, I can also hear myself. So let me turn that down. Alrighty, great. Well, it's great to see everybody today. Awesome. Well, today we are going to have a really fun free tip. Um, everybody has been wanting to learn how to make kind of this fancy knot on their leather bracelets. You can use it. I have a kind of a fun little bracelet design right here in front of me that I'm going to share with you. And, uh, but it's been kind of blown up on our bead shop group, the bead table. Um, and it's called the wall knot. It's actually the two strand wall knot w-a-l-l -L. and i think you're going to really love it and find it really useful to add a little bit of spark to your wrap bracelet designs so let's see let's see i've got so many people here as i scroll through there's oh and there's my mom always say hi to your mom hi gwen and look there's our friend brenda schwader hi brenda and there's mary and anna and Everybody, everybody's here. And Gita is here posting as beadshop.com. Thank you so much, Gita, from across the sea um, doing that linking. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you ever so. It's great to see everyone. Awesome. Well, I hope it's a good and creative and productive Friday where you guys are. It's a great Friday here, gearing up for a fun weekend. Um, and I think that you guys will think this is a fun little Friday project or weekend project to kind of get your creative juices flowing. And Emily, I just see Emily who's just jumped on and Emily's going to be back with us on Wednesday on uh, Facebook Live and you guys are not going to believe the project that she has in store for us. It's going to be amazing. I can't wait to share it with you and I can't wait to make one. Okay, well let me, uh, I'm going to put my phone down. And I'm going to move the um, camera around so you guys can see what I'm doing here. And so bear with me while I have a little bit of camera movement. I'm going to turn this around. I'm doing free tip here on my in my office today, so you know it's a little so it's a little quieter here because we've got the staff. Everybody's busy filling your orders, so I thought I'd come in here today and make it a little bit quieter for you guys. Um, okay, there we go. I think you can see me. You can see my hands okay. And I've got some um, instructions here that I'm going to post on a blog post after this as well. So you'll have a little bit of uh, instruction as well to go look at. Our blog is also called The Bead Table, just like our um, Facebook group. So if you can't find uh, the blog, you can always go to our um, homepage at beadshop.com. And if you scroll all the way down to the bottom of the homepage, it says uh, blog. There's a little tab for the blog, and you can find it that way. Or you can just do a search for bead table blog in your browser and um, in your whatever um, search engine you like to use, and it should come right up. Okay, so let me show you the knot here real quick, you guys, so you can see this. Um, the wall knot looks like, let me get it real tight in here so you guys can kind of see what's going on. Can you see how it's this decorative, kind of thick, heavy looking knot right here? And I've tied one, two, three, four of all of these. Uh, of these knots, right? And it's a nice way to um, kind of, I don't know, lead off on a design. You can also use it in the middle of a design, like, you know, if I wanted to add some here, which maybe I will. And it's a great way also to end a design, okay? And I used on this bracelet, I used some roller beads here 
Um, and the roller beads are, make my kind of quick little bracelet. So I'm going to show you uh, show you how I do that as well. So let's start by I'm going to put this aside, and I'm just going to start with um, the knot. Okay, so we'll start there, and then we'll get over to this. Alrighty. It does look pine coney, Brenda Schwader. It does. I love it so much. You can see I've also done it. Let me get real tight here. I've also done it with two strands. So I'm going to show you that. Okay. So I've used a double strand. And this opens up so many possibilities for laddering, you know, with one, two, three channels or bead weaving or things like that as well. So we've got a couple of cool... Um, cool options to go with this. But let's first talk about the knot, okay? So, as I said, this is called the two-strand wall knot, okay? And what we're going to do, we'll go to step one. We'll start with step one. Let me move these to the side. Let me get a little tighter in here. And I've chosen a button. Yes, it is similar to a snake knot. Michelle, uh, I think that this wall knot is a little easier to execute, um, so we're starting with that one. But I'm going to look up some more and share more of them on subsequent Free Tip Fridays for you as well. Um, I have this new um, flower um, button, one of our new ones. They're in our Just In section. Um, they're really, really cool. I love them and so we'll start one of these. I know it sounds like walnut doesn't it and I like walnut so um, maybe we'll just call it that. And I'm going to start with a 1.5 millimeter cord like so. Um, that 1.5 millimeter cord you could use a um, 2 millimeter whatever works for you but since I'm going to string some rollers through um, I use the 1.5. And remember, you guys, all of our stuff can be found on our website, including all of our free tip Fridays. You can go right to our website at beadshop.com and um, find all of our free tip Friday tutorials as well as all of the, um, the product that we're using. So I'm going to cut my length kind of short so I'm not scooting in with a big, um, with a super long strand. So I've got about, I don't know, 46 inches or so of cord. I'm going to cut the rest of this away. There we go. So I've got a small length to work with. Okay. So I've done step one, find the center of the cord and string on a button. Okay. Now, I'm right-handed, and this is the view. You're looking at the view as if you were sitting here and facing uh, the way that I'm facing here, my project. So I'm right-handed. So this is my right hand over here, right? So I'm going to take the right cord. I'm going to twist the right cord in a clockwise motion till it forms a loop. And I'm going to lay it on the left cord, OK? So this is step two. Twist right cord clockwise, place on left cord. Now we go to step three. Feed the tail of the left cord, that's this one, through the loop made with the right cord. So I'm just going to, I'm essentially just going to grab it and pull it through. Okay, whoops, I, sorry, I hit the camera there. Now, going to number four, and I keep my thumb kind of on that connection to keep that loop um, closed. Continuing with the left cord, go over the right cord behind all of this rigmarole here and out through the original loop. Oops, and keep that cord in the back. Okay, now we've tied our knot. We just need to pull the slack up. And with every kind of knotting technique, the first knot is always the hardest. But you're going to bring it up and you're going to tighten everything. Okay? Just like that. Okay? So there's my first knot tied. Let's do it again. Twist the right cord clockwise and place on the left cord. Twisting it clockwise, placing it on the left cord. Feel the feed the tail of the left cord through the loop made with the right cord 
and then continue with the left chord over the right chord behind the strands and out through the original loop. This loop wants to like pull forward, keep it behind. All right, you're in charge there. Keep that behind. Then you're going to pull this slack tight. What I do is I kind of push the button away and pull both of those threads kind of at the same time. The leather is a little stiff, but you'll get it. See, so there's number two. Look at that. Let me get in a little bit tighter so you can see this again. Okay. Once again, find the twist the right chord clockwise to form a loop. Put the tail of the left chord through that loop. Go over the right chord, behind the strands, and out through the original loop. So essentially, the right chord and the left chord have switched places. Now you're just going to pull the button away, pull the slack up tight, This is, again, where you have to kind of fiddle with it just a little to get it exactly where you want it to be. And it looks like I did something wrong there. So I was explaining, I was over explaining. So I'm just going to take it out. If it doesn't look right, take it out and repeat your steps. So right chord, chord clockwise, the tail of the left chord goes through. Your left chord goes over the right chord, behind the chords, and out through the original loop, and then you pull it tight. And there you go. Can you see how when I'm tightening it up, see how you, see how you get kind of that figure eight with a little kind of symmetrical wiggle in the middle, right? That's how you know, if it looks right like that, you know that's going to be correct. Okay. There we go. Lorraine says she's still trying to conquer regular macrame. Well, you know, a little bit of practice with all of these knots. I love knots. I've been tying knots for ever and ever. I love kind of collecting different knots. And the more, you know, you just kind of practice and the thing with knotting is, whatever you do on one side, you pro probably do on the other side. So, um, you know, that's kind of a rule of thumb. Uh, Kim is asking, if you drop it, how do you know which is the right chord? Well, I don't know. Let me see. You could, Kim, if you wanted. Whoops, that one didn't go right either, did it? It's because I'm talking and tying at the same time. So let me, uh, let me undo this. And Kim, if this is my right chord on this side, what I can do is I can tie a little knot on the bottom, just like that. So I know that's my right chord. Okay. So let's try it again. Twist my right chord clockwise, place it on the left chord pull my left chord through the loop or pull the tail through the loop and continuing with the left chord I go over the right chord behind and out through the original loop and then you tighten and see how see how that looks it just looks symmetrical so that's how I know this is right I love it how everyone is watching and creating along Tracy is waiting on a flight and watching well safe travels to you miss Tracy so here so if you notice what happened with this see how my right chord was my right chord and now that I've tied that knot the right chord becomes the left chord don't let that confuse you, but the right chord, um, so watch now with this one, this becomes my right chord, the one without my, without my knot, so I'll tie it one more time. Loop, go through, over, behind, out through the original loop, keep that chord behind there. 
and tighten. There it goes. And you'll know right away if you've not tied this correctly. It looks like I'm like one for two. This one's not right either. Come on now. What's the matter with me? It's because I have all of your eyes on what I'm doing. Right cord over, out, over, behind, and tighten. Let's see, to secure the button. Yeah, Debbie, we could do that. I uh, So I have a, um, a board right here. So let's see if we can, I had that same thought. So let me see if I can anchor that thought. What Debbie asked was, I think I would have to secure the piece. Um, it seems like so much flopping around and a big chance of a big mess. I agree. So let's check this out, okay? Let's try it. Yeah, Sharon, I was I think that this cord could be done probably with most cording, especially um like our surfer cord. I think it would look great. So see, I just have a little piece of Chinese knotting cord that I had sitting um on my desk. I pulled it through the loop of the button, but you could also if you had bigger cord like I've got some here, you could just secure it around the button here as well. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and clip it here like so. And so that's nice and secure. Okay, so let's do this again. I'm going to go ahead and start with my right cord. Here's my right cord. My right hand is here. Hello, hello everybody. I make my loop in a clockwise motion angle myself a little bit so it's better with the camera. I get the tail of my left cord through like so and I take this cord and I go over with my left cord. I go over my right cord behind all of my work and up and out and tighten it up. just like so. And you can see, come on now, there we go. That it tightens. I'm going to have to unclip it because I can't see it this angle. No, something went wrong again. Well, you're watching my feet of clay here. So don't worry if you're struggling. Sometimes I struggle too. So right hand, clockwise, left strand through, left strand over and behind and out through the original loop and tighten. Oops. And I might have to unclip and pull it up. Sorry, you guys, I need to get this a little closer to my eyes. <laughs> so, bear with me here just a second. There we go. Getting it re reorganized here. I think for me, tightening this up without it being clipped is the way to go. There we go, because I can see it. But you can certainly clip this down, no problem. It might want to twist a little bit, but you can see I've got a bunch of these knots um, tied here. I've got one, two, three, four, five. I've got six of these all in a row. Okay, and tie another. Michelle's saying if you tie another four on the braid and clip two more clamps on each side, it won't twirl on you. Um, hmm. I'm not sure I know what you mean, Michelle, but I'm sure it will, um, it will, it'll come to me. So, yep, yeah, so there we go. Okay. So let's take a look 
at uh, what I've done here with this piece. Okay, so here's, yeah, well, you know, that's what I love about live free tip is that, or any of our live broadcasts, you know, you get to see us, you know, bead in real time, right? So here what I've done is I've tied my knots and then I started to use our roller beads, okay? And um, you could set this up now and start your laddering, like if you wanted to ladder in between, right? You could build this up, start to ladder, do whatever it is that you want with this, right? So, but what I have here is I've added some roller beads to make a quick, uh, a quick bracelet so we can also um, close it up at the end. So, let me measure and see how many. I want to add maybe, I don't know, about four more roller beads to this piece. So let me show you. Let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and secure this piece to the board. Let me show you guys how I do that. Sometimes I do that with just a loop of CKC. Oh, it's great. So many of you are wishing our Janice a happy birthday. Her actual birthday is tomorrow on Saturday, but we're celebrating all weekend. So birthday uh, greetings all weekend are wonderful. And she's going to um, she's going to go uh, and have a fun celebration this weekend for sure. So here's this roller bead, and all I do, you guys, is I'm figure eighting right through this. So I go my right hand, my left hand, and pull. And this is, that's why I chose the 1.5 leather, because this 1.5 millimeter fits through that roller uh, bead just perfectly. Let me get a little tighter so you can see it. And Anissa, you um, are you said you joined a little bit late. You can always watch our rebroadcasts of all of our Free Tip Fridays on our YouTube channel, right here on our Facebook Live channel, or over on our website at beadshop.com. So uh, there are lots of ways. If you miss it, you can always rewatch it. And you know we have a wealth of Free Tip Fridays. Um, that we have done and have archived. The idea behind Free Tip Friday it, for me when I decide what I'm going to do is I purposefully don't do too much pre-planning because I like Free Tip Friday to kind of be responses, direct responses to questions that you guys might have or um, all you know other stuff like that. So um, our Facebook lives are a little more, I don't want to say scripted, but maybe they're a little more planned and our free tip Fridays are a little more off the cuff so um, so that's the story with those so I'm using the 1.5 our sable leather right um, and the sable uh, kind of goes from this brown to black which I love and yes I agree Cindy you were saying with the right beads this would be a great man's bracelet I agree completely I think it would look great I think it would really look great as a man's bracelet uh, let me get a little bit bigger let me measure this to make sure I haven't put too many beads on because we want enough to to knot at the end yep so I've got enough here um, I think um, to tie a few knots at the end so let me go ahead and follow my directions one more time and um, you guys were observing earlier when I was tying it. We want to make sure that, yes, that I don't twist this um, length back and forth. I want to hold it in the same direction. So I'm going to get my right cord. I'm going to twist it. Let me get this board out of the way. It might be easier for you guys to see. A little tighter. A little tighter. Twist my cord clockwise. Place on the left cord. Okay, I go through, feed the tail of the cord, through the loop, continuing with the left cord, I go over the right cord, behind, and out through that 
original loop. Okay, then I just tighten it up, pull out, tighten up the slack. And on this one, when you're tightening up the slack, um, what you want to do, it's kind of wants to twist a little funny. So let me let me get it back into my eye range here. There we go. Can you see that? It's nice and tight. So we'll do this next one clockwise, out through the loop, over, behind, out through the original loop, and tighten. Yeah, it does. It does make that pretzel shape. Can you see that there? There we go. So there's two. And let me do three and then we'll check our length, shall we? Make a loop out through, over the right hand cord, out through the original loop, and tighten. This is the part where you don't want your strands to flip because if they get flipped your knot ties in correctly. Okay. So now I've got three. Okay. So let me do a measurement here and see where I am. Pull that up just a, a little bit. This one is a little looser, so it's tapering just a hair. So there we go. Okay. Let me measure, see where I am. I'm going to tie a couple more. Pretty close. Looks like you guys are busy planning on what you're going to be making with this knot, which is awesome. I do think it would make a really nice guy bracelet, really nice lady bracelet, yeah, there we go. And the um, you may want to try with some different cords, we were talking about that a little bit earlier about the variety of cords that you could tie this with. So we could use our, um, try our 0.8 millimeter Chinese knotting cord, or we could use our 1.5 millimeter surfer cord. Both of those I think would work, uh, would work really nicely with this knot. Just feed it right up. There we go. All right, let's take a look how handsome that looks at the end. I can get a nice close shot in there for you guys. You can see that really nicely. Let me give this a measurement. Okay. And yeah, so we're at about seven. So if I were measuring this to fit my wrist, this looks like about, it's pretty close. Let me give myself one more of this, and then we're going to tie the knot for the button loop. And then I want to show you the double, how I do this double. Oops, I always want to go over, then behind, then out. And like I said, I will have these little directions written out on um, our blog post, and Karen will take a photo of this and it will be up for you guys to look at, to follow. Um, color choices, yes, with the surfer cord. And I think the surfer cord, you could also get yourself a knot that's a little, um, maybe a little tighter. Um, you know, a little more compact if you wanted because the surfer cord has a little more, uh, you know, you can tighten it a little bit more. This leather is a little stiff. There we go. There's my last knot. I know, I love the look of this too. And if you were, if you were continuing on to make a wrap bracelet, you could have, um, you know, a section here in the middle and then continue on with something else. So you can do a multiple wrap. I think it would look beautiful. And I think... Um, the, um, the roller beads are the turquoise Picasso 
roller beads. And Cindy, you say you've used this knot with a surfer cord. You have to be careful because it doesn't hold a knot well. Um, yeah, I think you do since it is. It might be kind of springy. Um, but uh, I'll have to try it out with a scrap of surfer cord and see how it goes. So that's great. I love it that so many of you are nodding along with me and you're getting, you're getting the hang of it. I love it. So let's just bring this around. Let's put the button in. And I can see I'm going to need to tie a knot about right there. So I'm just going to take that out, eyeball it up, loop it around, pull it through. You could, um, I don't know, you could macrame this closure, you could silk wrap this closure, you could do whatever you wanted, but I'm just going to have a little overhand knot right here. I don't want it to cross, I want it to be nice and straight. Let me see if I can fiddle with that just a little bit to get it right. Loosen it up. I always like my knots to lay side by side, nice and even and neat. There we go. That's better, I think. Come on. Who's the boss of that knot, everybody? That's me. So I'm going to tell it I'm in charge. There we go. That looks a lot nicer. Knot twisted. Okay. And let's make sure that before I cut anything off, that that button goes through. And it does. That might be a little long, so let me just tighten it up just a little. <laughs> oh, great. I see that so many of you are tying this along with me. I love that you're having success in real-time knotting. I love it. Yes. Let's see if this opens and comes off. Yeah, much better. Okay. There we go. And then maybe I'll finish off these little closures. Let me go just knot this end here like this and like this and pull it tight. Maybe just one through. That double is a little heavy. Yeah, yay, you guys. Good job. I'm going to do that, and I'll tie this other one just here. Right, nice and tight. And, whoops, let me cut, clip. Come on there. I'm going to clip away my extra there and there. And look what we've got, you guys. Look at how nice that closure, can you see that, how that closure looks? Really good. I love that there are nodding puns going along in the comments. You guys are awesome. Look at how great that looks. So good, if I do say so myself. Now, let me complicate things. I've got a few more minutes before I will log off, and I'm going to set this one aside. And I'm going to show you what I did here with the one millimeter leather, of course, because, you know, why, why stop there? Let's, you know, more is more, right? But when you tie knots with a doubled cord, and some of you were watching me when I um, did the um, Chinese button knot, um, and I was doing it with two strands, you want to make sure that when you're working with two strands that we're keeping those two strands laying side by side. So I started it the same way. Can you see how I just put two strands through the button right here? And I'm just going to do the very same thing. I've got my right cords and I'm going to turn them in a clockwise direction. And as I turn them See how I want, let me show you here, sorry my fingers are a little fumbly. See how when I turn them, let me get in even a little bit tighter, how nothing crosses that inside loop and the outside loop. They're not crossed over like this, but they're laying side by side, okay? Then I bring these strands through also side by side. Pull that through. 
Now, keeping my thumb where this cross is, keeping these strands side by side, I go over, just like we did before, behind and out through that loop. Okay? Now, as I'm tightening it up, can you see there's nothing that's crossing? They're still all laying side by side. I tighten, I tighten. And it just tightens right into place there. Really make sure that everything is sitting one next to the other. Okay, and that's it. We've tied it with a double strand. Okay, let me do it again. This is one millimeter leather lin that I'm doing with this double knot. That's uh, the one millimeter. The single strand, I use the 1.5. Okay, so again, one more time. Let's make that loop. And it's going in the clockwise direction. Nothing, the strands are not crossing over. I bring the leather through the loop. Over the strand. Back out. All the while keeping everything side by side. And once you get the hang of tying it with one strand, sorry, I'm out of frame a little bit, sorry about that. Once you get the hang of tying it with one strand, you'll be able to tie it with two. Just keep it nice and loose and everything straight. There we go. And tighten. Okay. There we go. And it is nice just by itself, right? Very nice by itself. And see there it's twisted just a hair. So I'm going to just kind of untwist it a little bit. There we go. Done and done. All right, so now with this double strand, what you guys can do is if you wanted to, you know, ladder in between or weave in between or whatever, but this gives you a lot of kind of interesting um, starting points or ideas to go with with this. So I hope that you enjoyed our little fun little adventure in the wall knot. I will get a little bit tighter so you can see it one last time. Right? It would. You could mix these two leathers. You certainly could, Petrina. You could have, you know, these be two different metallic leathers or whatever whatever you liked, whatever worked for you. It would be really cool. Okay. Let me move the uh, camera around and we'll sign off here. So bear with me as the camera moves around here. It does, it's very walnut looking. There we are, and here I am, here I am, there I am. Let me tighten all of this up again so I don't drop the camera. There's that one, there's that one, there's this one. Let me Okay. All right, you guys. Well, I'm so glad you joined me today. Again, I'll have these directions right up on our website in just a little bit. You'll be able to find that. Karen will put a, um, a link right on to those. Uh, any last um, questions here? Oh, Trish, you're seeing my silver bracelet here that I got. Nope. Uh, this was a piece that I got from um, a West African jeweler when I was in um, Tucson 
This was a, uh, I'll, I'll show you, I'll take it off because I love it. West African jewelry has such, if I can get it off, has such a rich history. I love it so, so much. But you can see it's just a simple, beautiful um, little cuff um, made in the West African jewelry style. I love it so much. Uh, so thank you for noticing. All right, well, thanks, you guys. I'm glad you enjoyed it. You can always, as I say, you can always watch the uh, replay on our website, beadshop.com, uh, under the um, Free Tip Friday um, banner up at the top. You can also see us on beadshop.com on our um, YouTube channel, and you just search there. All of our videos are on there, and of course, all of our products and stuff are right on there on beadshop.com for you to find. So thank you so much. I am looking so forward to seeing you guys um, next Wednesday with Emily. She'll be back and she's making a wonderful textured fringe bracelet. It's going to be a seed bead school, so we'll welcome her back uh, with her favorite medium, which is seed beads. All right, you guys, have a fantastic and creative weekend, and we'll see you next week on Facebook Live. Thanks so much for joining me. See you soon. Bye-bye.